Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of the futuristic HUD tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to, cre how to create the grid display that's in front of him on the lower part of the screen. Okay, let's go into Blender. In Blender what we need is a simple plane And we need to align it to the camera. Let me quickly switch to auto graphic view mode. Select with the plane selected, R to rotate, X to rotate along the X axis and 90 degrees. Now from camera view, we can see that the plane is aligned so it's pointing towards the viewport of uh, the camera but it's a bit as you might remember I said I will assume that the nose of our character or the the actor here is on one level with this basic grid plane here so if you see in side view the plane is below this point so i'm going to move it upwards the z-axis and see how it looks i definitely want it a bit wider um, not g scale along the x-axis so it fills the screen better and then let's see maybe a bit back again closer to the ground let's add a material and see how this renders I'm going to call the material grid and it's going to be a wire material shadeless and transparent for about let's say 0.4 transparency and I want it to have a blue color let's see how this renders out you can see it looks very strange to get it a bit more visible or like we want it let's select the plane and rotate it around the x-axis and angle it a bit more you can see it in side view probably better so it's pointing it's angled a bit more relative to the camera so we should see the grid a bit better um, let me switch to node editor and show you what I mean before we go into the defocus node that's strange well the defocus node is causing usually a bit problems with in combination with the Um, with the wire material but first of all in order to get a nice wire I have forgotten one step the wire follows the vertices of the grid uh, of the model and right now I only have four of them so tap into edit mode and subdivide until we have a nice array that might even be a bit too much. Let's see how this looks. Yes, you can see there's a grid visible, but we also have a problem with the defocus node. It does not work properly with a wire material. To fix that, first of all, I move it a little bit back. And to fix that, we press M and move it to a second layer 
and we add another render layer that I will just call grid. And this render layer will only render the second layer where our grid is on and the first one will only render the first layer where our aiming device is on. Now in the node editor shift D to duplicate this node move it up and I want this to be to render the grid give it a quick render we can see the grid right here and if I copy the alpha over node and combine those two then we have the aiming circles that are blurred the closer they are to the camera and the unblurred grid switch them around or maybe not And if we add this here to the alpha over node that combines all with our video, we have this result. Of course, it looks strange because we have out of focus effect up here, but not for the grid, but we can fix that pretty easily. With our grid still selected, by the way, I could rename this mesh from plane to grid. It's just a bit nicer for the organization of our file and I add a new texture deactivate it right here because we won't need it on the actual uh, object we just need it in the editor and uh, the node editor for compositing and it should be a blend texture and I want it to be not radial Spherical, yes, spherical looks good. I activate ramp and want a ease. And if we use this for our um, input to mask something out that is out of focus and something that's in focus, we will have, I can flip this around with the F button here that actually says flip oh yeah flip color band on this last one we want it to be visible so the way this will work is things that are white will be will get the out of focus effect and things that are black won't get it so we want the in focus parts to be roughly where his face is so the circle in the middle will be a pretty good approximation of that we have white on the outside and a black circle in the middle and i've changed it from linear to ease to make a bit more of a smooth transition and i could make the black in the middle bigger but i'll see I'll see how much I need to do that later on. So we need a distortion, no, a filter, bokeh blur. We need an input file, a actual bokeh image. That goes here. Our image goes here and now we have this out of focus completely but if we also add our texture the blend texture and use the color input as a controller for the size and activate variable size 
we can see that the crit is out of focus on the border of the image and this round shape of the center there it will be in focus and if i move this slider for the texture around to make the circle bigger you can see i can increase the area of the grid that's actually in focus but i feel the out of focus effect is a bit strong so i decrease the max blur by let's say eight that doesn't seem to change much but alternatively i could change this here from a white to a grayish color to have a not as strong out of focus effect if we now use this as a input in the alpha over node to combine it with our circles we get this and i'd say that looks pretty nice now back to the 3d view because of course right now if we let the animation run through the grid doesn't move at all and i feel it looks much better when it's not so static but doing a bit of movement so with it selected we go to the uh, not modifiers to the object constraints and i'll use copy location I target the tracking point that we have created. I activate offset so we won't, uh, it will keep the offset relative to this tracking point. And now we can see it follows his eye movement as well. But I don't want it to move up when he looks up but only to move side to side when he when he looks side to side so i deactivate the copy location z location and y location and now if he looks side to side the grid will follow and what i actually also did because it shouldn't follow as strongly as the circles right here so i decrease the influence to i believe like 0.7 or even 0.5 so it will move around slightly when he moves his head Point 0.7 might have actually been better And now let me quickly check again our output here in the node editor. Everything looks okay. And to check out how this looks completely, I changed to video editing and I've shown and explained what I'm doing in different videos. Basically, I add our scene to the video editor and then I can do a RAM preview but as long as OpenGL preview is activated we will see what's in the 3D view but without it we will actually get a preview of what our compositor does. If I now press Alt A it will run through the animation and catch the images into the RAM and when it's done with that, we can look at how our animation will look like in real time. That's a pretty nice feature of Blender. If you want to check out what your render will look like without having to basically completely render out a video file as a default or 
preview render. This, I feel, is a bit quicker when you do small adjustments because you can do it in Blender. And the grid could use a little bit extra movement. So back to default view, into the 3D view, and if I rotate it on the Y axis, no, on the Z axis, on the first frame, like so, and insert a keyframe for the location and move around, let's say, 60 frames. Move it to the other, uh, rotate it in the other way and rotate it once again. Don't forget to set a keyframe when you do that. And on the last frame, insert a keyframe. And now you can see, in addition to following his head movement, the grid will sort of rotate from side to side and get a bit angled. Let's see how this frame looks like. And I feel that's quite a nice effect. Next time I'm going to show you how to add some lighting to his face because you would expect that this interface would cast a bit of a blue light on his face and I will show you how to do that. Until then, goodbye and I hope you learned something and enjoyed this tutorial. See you later.